So first, all right, against Yodel. Um, this hand's a pretty easy mulligan in this matchup. Um, I'd keep it against some other decks, but I guess Transmog's okay. We have Transmog into Exarch of the Egg, or on the play. I just like these Urnazes are awful, and I think I'd rather mulligan to a hand that possibly has, um, possibly has Vampire King in it, especially game one. Get that. Ask and you shall receive. So this hand needs some resources, and it's not great because it has one, our, our one main deck Mass Poly Dingler in it, but it's got kill and it's got VK, so that's probably fine on the play. I have a stop on my ready step. That's annoying. Hey, Immortals, Coach, Sam. Shards, please. Ding. Would have liked a sapphire shard. Beggars won't be choosers, though. We'll take we'll take a blood shard for sure. This card is nuts against us. This is single, single best card in the matchup easily. Very, very good against us. All right, we're going to play VK on four, which is nice. <laughs> they just keep going and going and going and going. Well, definitely spending a kill on this dork. So he, does, he doesn't have a blood shard yet, which is nice. He can't activate his champion ability. And if he can't activate his champion ability, he likely can't kill his vampire king without two for winning it, which is reasonable for us. If you can, like, one for one with a crackling bolt or burning tendrils, it's not great. But if he has to two for one, it's still doing, a, doing his job. And in the event that he doesn't have two removal spells to kill this, like, it's just going to win the game very quickly, both by gaining us life and by just dealing a lot of damage to him. A hey, martyr. Winged Nazgul, what is this link? Hero is coming. I'll be right back. Sorry. Sorry about that. My oldest was having a meltdown. All right. Well, this game's going well. So, crunch. The question is, do we transmog this 2-1? I almost feel like we shouldn't. Like, he has a lot of scary things that could go, oh, jeez. Well then, uh, huh. Well, that's, things are going better than expected. I think I just let this be. He missed a shard drop last turn, so it's not really doing a whole lot. This keeps it on block. All right. In response to this, I'm going to transmog this. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to do that. Cosmic Totem, put target champion's crypt into any target champion's deck. All right. All right. Hopefully, 
these two cards mean he just can't race us. I think this was at least a turn too late for him. Um, I'm going to Inquisition first, because in the event he has troop and non-troop, I want to guarantee to hit the troop. Electro Fry in the main deck. Gross. That definitely could have gotten him back into the game. Now he can burn my vampire, but uh, VK is just going to keep crunching down on him. Yeah, right, Martyr? Put any any crypt into anyone else's deck. Like. And now we're at a point where shards are good and non-shards are good. I guess we have some, some stinkers, like Extinction's not great right now. I was just about to say we could definitely still lose this game if he draws like a Burning Tendrils this turn, and that's exactly what he hit. Okay, yep. We're not out of the woodwork just yet. Because he has a burn in his hand to finish off this vampire. So hopefully we hit like a shard into Oracle Song, maybe Relentless Corruption, or Lanupaw's Sight. Alright, another shard. Let's go ahead and play this. This Mass Polydingler is going to turn his 2 1 off at some point, which is nice. Inquisition here wouldn't be the worst, because we could take his burn and save our vampire. Alright, well, we'll take all this corruption. Draw a card off of our opponent's deck. Taking a shard from him is not the greatest. How does this match usually go? Um, Ebony Pawns are single best card against us. You usually don't win many games where they play Ebony Pawn on two. Uh, that being said, like, he stumbled a lot this game, so maybe we have a chance. Is that going to burn my vampire? Yep. And then we're taking three, four, five here. And then we're like almost 100% mass poly dinglering. Our opponent's 2 1 or 3 1 next turn. <coughs> Need to find another VK or some card advantage. Rentless corruption wouldn't be bad. A shard is not great. We're not playing out the Ruby Shard because we don't want him to know that's what we drew from his deck. Yeah, that's basically the reason for all the mods is the magic chats need heavy moderation because that community is degenerate. Alright, shard from him is good for us. I see you can activate this and do 6 to us this turn, 4 and 2. Well, it's a little unfortunate. Drawing their shards feels bad when you want them to be bricking. So we're through 10 shards and 14 cards, so we should have we should have a decent amount of action coming up, hopefully. Um, so I'm actually going to save this, and the reason why I'm going to save it is I want to play it the turn before we deploy a threat to like check for an Electro Fry or check for a Pengu Power with the 4-month 3 sub. Thank you for the continued support. I do appreciate it. I believe the term is Rec Scrub. I, I like, as we're talking about how obnoxious the magic community is, someone comes into chat and does that. Alright, so we got punished for not playing the Inquisition. Good beats. Good beats. No, we're, we're zero tolerance for... Sh I almost I almost said a, a, a poor word. We're, we're zero tolerance for negative community members here. Get out of here, go ruin someone else's channel, you're not, we don't need them. Just get, get gone. Uh, what do I want to cut? I don't have Inquisition in this matchup. It's medium. I mean, that's, that's TCGs, right? You're going to drop early sometimes? Sometimes you flood out and your opponent... I mean, like, we could have... I could have had another turn there if I would have just Inquisitioned my opponent. I think I'm supposed to wait because they're likely holding a shard, but... I don't know. I could be wrong, too. 
I am going to Gen Con. I'm leaving tomorrow afternoon. So this is actually going to be my only Hex stream this week, unfortunately, because I will be at Gen Con. Hey, Colin. Yeah, I was going to trim the Transmogs and the Inquisition. Transmogs kind of scary against this deck because they have a lot of... Well, you just want to actually kill their things. Elder Room bringing counter magic. Yeah, that's a good... Yes, you are right. I should do that. Maybe we'll just be lucky and not hit it. Saying it's great. Keep. It's got Vampire Princess. It's got a Kiss. It's got Double Inquisition on the play. Just like... Uh, I do not intend to touch a magic card at Gen Con. I play magic every other weekend. Gen Con is going to be about hex and other other activities. Shards, shards, perfect. All right, sweet. So you get to go Inquisition into Vampire Princess, activate, kiss his duelist. Yeah, and hopefully going to be hard pressed to lose this game. Huh. Really, he just snapped off one shard on the draw. All right. Um, I'm gonna take Ebony Pawn, because again, that's just like one of his single best cards against us. He has to hit Blood Shard in order to be able to kill this Vampire Princess with that burn, so... Sure. Sure. No, I had posted that Immortals, and then um, I got invited to uh, an, an event Wednesday night at Gen Con that uh, a supply distributor is hosting, and it seems like good networking for the stream, so unfortunately I have to leave Wednesday afternoon now as well. So I can't, I can't do Wednesday. Uh, now I have to Inquisition him and take this burn away. Ugh. <sighs> Are we gonna like play arena regular, play crackling vortex now? Just a regular shard, sure. That's good. That means he can't uh can't kill Vampire Princess next turn. Let's play this, and because this was in my opening hand, it has the text to activate and make my kisses free. So we'll kiss one of these guys, gain two. Put the Shard of Cunning into play. Sapphire. And his last two cards are uh, Arena Regulars, so... If he misses here for a little bit, this Vampire Princess might get to do some work. Don't burning tendrils me, bro. Don't do it. Have a heart. Sweet. Had a lot of life draws off our deck and his. Orling Brutalizer's not a bad one to get there. So I think I'm supposed to leave this on defense since I'm going to have so many draws coming back up. Uh, you can find all of my archives on my YouTube channel. I enabled the sub-only playback to encourage people to use the YouTube channel. For, for the archives. The YouTube channel is much nicer. <laughs> you can search for things on there. And it's got Brits broken up and archived on there. It's not instant, but... The arena regular that we knew about, sure. That's rough, because he's going to let one of these start attacking through my guy. This is the one that just came into play, though, so I can't attack this turn, so that's great. Another VP is not bad. Uh, I th think I'm going to run the gambit on this, because we could hit, like, burns and stuff off his deck to kill his guys. Blood infusion device isn't bad. I think I'm supposed to just be resource efficient here, though, and play the Dark Spire Priestess. Right, I did board out the extinctions, because in general they're not great in this matchup. 
Correct. So if you want instant access to things right away, there's an extra little perk for being a sub, which I don't think is a bad thing. But everyone is still getting the archives for free. And just You might have to wait a little bit. But they're also nicer when you wait a little bit, too, so... And since we have this other vampire princess, we can start uh, shipping in with this first one. Gaining some life. Kiss is great. Kiss, again, I can use this to make my kiss free until end of turn. That's why there's three in the board. To go ahead and do this and gain some life. Oh, am I going to play the Lixel today? That's a good question. What time does that start? I don't know if I feel like playing agar.io in between, but I also kind of want some more promos. That's tough. I'm not sure. Ebony Pawn's very good. Can't interact with that, but we've got our we've got our wall. This blood infusion device uh, not only is going to let us gain life, but it let us use our champion ability a turn sooner, which is great. Another princess, sign me up. So this game should be firmly in hand here. I'm probably going to have a hard time passing up free value in the Lixel. Yeah, I'm probably going to play that. Why? I'm surprised he didn't activate his champion ability. Would have gotten four points of damage off of it. Um, it's it's much worse in matchups like this. Like the the extra points of life are huge. Like I can't. I don't even think I can put into words how how huge it is. So if I attack with all of these, yeah, I'm just gonna attack with all of these because then he's dead next turn. Well, if I hit him for four, he goes to nine. Okay, I don't have to attack with all. And this does three. So this puts him to ten, and this puts him to four. Yeah, so I can just attack with two of them, and he's still dead next turn. Plus, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to set up a second account. I uh, set up a uh, set up a second second thing. Uh, we're gonna cut the Thunderfield Seers like I should have uh, Thunderfield Elders, and I think I'm gonna put two Transmogs in on the draw. That seems fine. Like tagging Whirling Brutalizer before I can attack and trigger is pretty big. Sure. I mean, I'm explaining. I feel like I'm explaining. If you, if there's a, if there's a line I take that you're unsure of, feel free to ask. If you're unsure what a card does, you can ask as well. There's also worker bot in chat, so you can pull up the card text yourself there. Yeah, this sounds, this sounds actually very good. We've got um, a shard that doesn't make a temporary resource on one just to curve out, and then so we get Sapphire with this, and then we get Blood and play Exarch of the Egg, and then we have uh, Vampire Kiss on three. Hopefully we have VK on four. Sweet. Hit our fourth shard already, which is excellent. So everything we want to be doing and so much more. We can't Inquisition on two here, but we probably want to play this on two over Inquisition anyways. It's like, want to draw a bunch of vampires for the rest of the game now? Doesn't have a blood shard. That's good for us. Ebony Pawn is not good for us. Again, just as single best card in the matchup. I 
Yeah, just draw vampires for the rest of the game. That plan is going swimmingly. So if we hit a fifth shard here, our curve is actually just going to be super strong. We'll get to go Exarch this turn, Kiss next turn, Vampire King on th four, and then Princess with Verdict up on three. And then Princess protected by Verdict is probably going to be enough to put away the game. That's a lot of damage. So I'm going to go ahead and kiss my opponent's Ghostblade Duelist here. There's two reasons for doing this. The first is that the Ghostblade Duelist always represents direct damage. The second is that if my opponent has removal for a troop on the battlefield, I want them to be killing my Exarch of the Egg this turn so they can attack with their Arena Regular, because if they're killing my Exarch of the Egg, they're much less likely to be able to kill my Vampire King the following turn. He's like really, I don't know if I want to say conservative or stingy with activating his champion ability. He just like doesn't seem to like to do it. Uh, Tigerzord, feel free to message me on Facebook or Twitter. I always try to look at deck lists there. I, I try to make a point not to look at deck lists while I'm streaming because there's just you know a lot of stuff going on between the chat and everything else and like keeping up with Facebook and Twitter posts on top of that. So if you drop me a message on Facebook or Twitter, I'm usually happy to look at deck lists. And if I don't respond to you in a day or two, feel free to ping me again. This week especially is a little bit tight because uh, I'm going to Gen Con this weekend, so just burning tendrils on my VK. Yep, that's fine. Activate that. So hopefully we hit a shard that makes a temporary resource this turn again so we can go Princess into Hold Verdict up. Lena ship with both of these. This is... Okay. Block. I didn't actually read the announcement yet, but someone else linked it in chat. Shard, shard, shard. Alrighty. Huh. I think I actually want to do this as opposed to playing the Vampire Princess out. No, that's probably not right. Because the upside to playing the Princess out here is that if he has to kill this, he can't kill the Dark Spire next turn. But I guess I'd much rather be able to protect this with the Verdict. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a liar. I'm just going to go ahead and kill this Dork. And then, hopefully, again, we next turn we draw a shard that makes temporary resource and play Princess plus have Verdict up. Uh, I did not, Immortals. And, and honestly, uh, unless you're playing regionals this weekend, I probably just wouldn't worry about standard till after we have Pro Tour lists. Shard that makes a temporary resource. We play 27. Alright, we'll just settle for infinite life gain. That's fine, too. If we're not going to draw shards, we can keep drawing vampires and vampire-related things. A-okay -A with that. Wait, 20 new champions? Holy crap. 20 champions is huge. Like, that's insane. Wow, that's really big. Uh, the prizes in the Lixel tournament are better are better than the arena for sure. No, neither of these princesses was in my opener. I drew it on like turn two, I think. Waiting on my opponent here. Kind of, they're kind of between a rock and a hard place. All right. Yep. Because he wants to play the Whirling Brutalizer out, so Vampire King can't take it away from him. Come on, shard this turn, and I, I wish would say that's gonna put the game away, but it really, really is. Another Exarch of the Egg. All right. So I think I'm just playing Exarch of the Egg and staying on defense here. Now that I can just like hold this verdict up to protect my VK. 
Oh, uh, you know what? I probably should have just, like, slammed into him there, right? Because I have two Exarchs to block. Yeah, not attacking there was wrong. I was 100% wrong to not attack there. Resolves. This verdict's gonna make him really sad. Unless he has three burns in his hand, and then we're gonna be a little bit sad. Sure. Oh, crap. Yeah, you're right. Crap. Yeah, I've never played this game before. <laughs> oh, damn it. Good job, chat. And I, I, I should have just attacked last turn, and then we'd be in a great spot. But now I'm going to lose because I'm an idiot. Could have, could have verdicted the burn. All right, we hit a shard at least. And definitely, definitely should have attacked last turn. So I should be at, I should be at 12 right now. Should definitely be at 12 right now. That's unfortunate for me. Yep. So, even even not countering the burn there just to like get his brutalizer off the table is fine, I think. The the mistake was not the mistake was not having hit him with the vampire king last turn. Yeah, we played 3 kits and we've actually drawn 2 this game. So, our hand was actually very good this game and that mistake could definitely cost us having not attacked there. Okay, hopefully he's got an action in his hand. If he's got actions in his hand, this Vampire Princess could easily still win the game. Especially if we draw a shard this turn so we get to hit him, get a Vampire Kiss, and play this other princess. Another verdict of the Ancient Kings is great. Action. Survey says? Electro for a... Uh, yep. Um, so, hmm. Am I just supposed to use this? I think I'm just supposed to use this now. And just, like, hold up this Verdict of the Ancient Kings. Again, just, like, be a little conservative. I could jam this other princess and just hold up Verdict, but there might be a world where we die there. I don't know. Maybe I'm just supposed to play this. It looks like we might have drawn enough vampires to get out of this game alive. If he's got two actions in his hand that he can't cast both of right now, he's just in a lot of trouble. Snap block here. Hopefully he doesn't get the damage half of this coin flip. He did not get the damage half of the coin flip. That's good for us, because he probably doesn't want to play it out, because he wants to empty the actions out of his hand. Burn me. Resolves. Crackling bolt me, probably. 
Okay, so his last card must not be an action, or it's another really expensive action. Shard, okay. Yeah, that three, the fact that he would be at three life lower if I would attack with the Vampire King at the right time and I would be three life higher is just so huge here. We're going to make it past this turn, it looks like. This is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine if he hits the right half of the coin flip and we gain two when we block with Vampire Princess. So I'm hoping we're going to make it out of this game it's despite, despite having missed a six point life swing. Princess is out of the border, so good, Miss Princessa. And now my opponent can't just attack in and try and trigger this because we'll gain two from combat. So the hat. That is what you could call a good draw. When you're running hot, you're running hot. So let's go ahead and... I'm just going to go ahead and do this now. Although I guess this is wrong if he draws... If he draws Whirling Brutalizer, that was wrong. Okay, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. I should have waited because if he hits Whirling Brutalizer, I'm going to wish I didn't do that. I don't think he has anything that could punish us for waiting. So if he's exactly Whirling Brutalizer, that, that doing that was wrong. I think we still win even if he has, even if he has Whirling Brutalizer, but it was definitely wrong to sequence when I did. Opponent said GG's, GG's opponent. All right, uh, I'm gonna try and cue a quick match with the Yodel deck um, because I would like to play the Lixel tournament here at uh, one o'clock, and Yodel Yodel can win can win a match in 18 minutes, no problem. 17 minutes. <sighs> uh, my opponent said GG's first. Okay, if they say GG's first, I think you can say GG's back. Uh, keep hand. Hand's great. I said the winner should never initiate the GG's, is my opinion. Yeah, I think I'm going to play Blood Sapphire in the Lixel. Not only because it takes a little while to win the games, but it's also... It's, it's just so many reasons to play that deck. Like, it's powerful and I like it. Just like the trifecta of reasons to play it in a tournament that doesn't have... Uh... Hey, time to gather icon. That was a good draw. We just have infinite charges now too, because we've got this and some crackling bolts here and stuff and things. Kid Mime with the five month three sub. Thank you for the continued support. I do appreciate it. That's great. You get to play this. And crackling bolt them for four and then activate both of these.
Eternal's a solid medium. I'm not sure I would play it nearly as much if I couldn't play it on my phone. Playing, playing able to play Eternal on my phone is a huge plus. Eternal is a digital CCG that's being developed by Direwolf Digital. It's being made by uh, people who are largely magic professionals. That just doesn't matter because these are dealing damage to him directly. I think I'm just supposed to... Am I supposed to kiss this or do I just not care? Maybe I just don't care. Yeah, he's going to six here. Yeah, I just don't care. The The gameplay in Eternal is reasonable. I just uh, w reminded every time I play it how much I hate, hate, hate collectible card games. It's so miserable to just grind things and not be able to buy singles. Alright, that's pretty good. That gives us a resource at least. So activate th th Why wouldn't you attack? Sure. That was a pretty good one. I was wondering how he could get out of this game, and uh, that explains it. I guess I, I guess I should just block here, right? Because then he's dead if I win the coin flip. Damage, please. Yep. All right. Sweet. Dead. All right. Button playing a bit of a brew. Um, what I want to do here? Kiss doesn't seem good. Doesn't seem like we're racing really. Uh, Burning Tendril seems fine. He's probably going to... He's probably going to turn into damage and... Or spell shield and rhino post board, I'd imagine, because the actual removal on those guys isn't very good against us. I think this is an Ember Spire Witch matchup. Eternal's in closed beta right now. You have to be in the closed beta to get access to the installers. But yes, there is a closed beta installer for, for Android. I'm going to cut here. It's funny, I making the archive subs only is really going to help me figure out how many people actually watched my archives on Twitch as opposed to YouTube. This is good. I should have done this sooner. I'd much rather people watch things on YouTube. I'd, I would prefer to get numbers there as well. So you still have access to everything and it's all cut up and nice. Just click the YouTube link below. Yes, I will be, Thar. Uh, what am I cutting? Yeah. Arena regulars usually my go-to. I feel like Dark Spire Priest is probably isn't great in this matchup, but I also don't want it less than three. I don't think so. I'm just gonna split the difference and go one-one. Yeah, it seems pretty good. We get to go uh, curve our arena regular into Whirling Brutalizer, and we have a shard. We don't have a one drop, but we have a shard that doesn't make a temporary resource, which is effectively a good first turn play. Ooh, 
What's next Tuesday, Martyr? And again, we want to play Arena Regular first, and the reason why we want to lead on this is because Whirling Brutalizer does extra damage if your opponent's already taken damage in a turn, and Arena Regular deals damage to my opponent whenever we gain a charge. So if we play a resource, we'll gain a charge, and Arena Regular will hit my opponent, and then we can play Whirling Brutalizer and crack for a bunch. Wow, he just left the sockets the same, huh? That's interesting. So what am I doing here? I think I'm just activating. Yeah, I'm just gonna be just gonna be aggressive here. I'm gonna activate this. I'm gonna play this Ruby Shard. I'm gonna jam Whirling Brutalizer and then crunch for at least three up to six. If he doesn't block, he's gonna take an extra three, but he could just trade. But that's fine if he wants to like trade his guy for my Whirling Brutalizer that already did three points of damage to him. I think we're fine with that. It's also possible I'm just supposed to like play this Shard of Hatred out and play Ember Spire Witch in case my opponent has the Midnight Paladin next turn to gain life. Playing this is the most resource efficient though, so I kind of like that play. He has Midnight Paladin this turn, though. Ooh, Shard that doesn't make a temporary resource. That's good for us. That's really good for us. Does this do? Deals damage and flight. Okay. Another Whirling Brutalizer is pretty good, so I'm just going to play this out, which does one to my opponent from this, and then we're going to go Ember Spire Witch plus Dark Spire Priestess here. Probably getting him a sapphire so this can fly. Yep. This is good insurance against a lot of his best cards, though. He could have an extinction here, which would kind of suck. But I guess the extinction's trading like two for three. If he has extinction into Midnight Paladin, I'm going to be sad. God, he left extinction in postport. Okay. So, him having extinction in postport is definitely going to change the way I'm boarding for game three. I was not expecting him to still have that in his deck. I'm going to go ahead and play this out and grab a blood here. I'm just going to go ahead and activate your tool and uh, burn my opponent for three and then crunch in with Whirling Brutalizer for six. I was not expecting to have to play around extinction. I don't think it's particularly good against this deck. Well, I guess if you expect Ember Spire Witch, it gets a little better. This is probably Midnight Paladin. Yep, never not have it. So it goes to 10. Alright, what's the line here? Burning Tendrils. It's unfortunate. Uh, I think I'm just supposed to kill this and crack him for 3. Yeah, that's probably right. And I'm going to hold this shard in case we draw another Arena Regular. We would have Burning Tendrils there. He would have died, right? Yeah, we would have Crackling Bolted him down to 7, and then Burning Tendrils, yeah, so Burning Tendrils would have ended the game. That's pretty good. We've got draws to just kill him here, though. Uh, burning Tendrils ends the game. Um, 
Crackling Bolt ends the game. So, Blood Infusion Device ends the game. Arena Regular does not end the game though, right? Yep, so we play this and then... Yeah. I think I'm just passing the turn here. Because I think I need to activate this next turn to deal extra damage with whatever we draw on top of everything else. So I'm supposed to just pass, I think. Because I could activate this, play this, put him to 5, attack, put him to 2, but then he just gets to like block and eat my guy. He's unfortunately going to get to gain 5 on his turn, but I'm not sure we're going to be able to deal 12, so... Thank you for the warning. I was gonna play a little bit faster here. Ouch, just second second one. Oh, and then he gets to attack with both. Alright, let's just concede and go on to the next game here. Good beats opponent. Um Yeah, I'm gonna cut these arena regulars and bring back in this and a burning and a heroic outlaw. With speed and damage save. Might not talk a whole ton during this one, because so I'm going to try and win this game in three minutes, so that way we can play the Lixel. And otherwise, I'm going to concede. So we can play the Lixel tournament, because the Lixel tournament is better value than uh, playing on a ladder that we can't uh, get higher and keep paying. Sounds great. Unfortunately, we can't Ghost Blade on one, but we got everything else going to us. So I was going to play this Darkspire Priestess, but the fact that we drew Whirling Brutalizer means I want to get this Ghostblade Duelist out so we can um, activate Ghostblade Duelist and then Whirling Brutalizer for 6 next turn. Why don't you run Extinction in this matchup? Because uh, their opponent doesn't have a lot of troops that we need to be killing, really. Activate this. Play this. Jam this down his throat. Or, or why, are you asking, yeah, that's a good question. You're asking, why do I board out extinctions against Yodel, or why don't I have extinctions in my deck right now? Because Yodel does have extinctions in the board. Kill? Reap? Pass the turn? Reap, sure. Send a message. Could activate, just attack instead. I didn't board it out, I just chose not to board it in. There's extinctions in the reserves of this deck. If he plays Paladin here for five, I'm probably just going to concede. Nope, just Lixel, okay. All right, opponent, go quickly. Conceding to Diamond Infinitrix.
We good. We good, fam. It's okay. It's okay. We good. We maybe could have actually won that game still where our opponent hit the Lixel, the infinite tricks, but we didn't have time to win it and still play the Lixel tournament, so we're going to play the Lixel tournament. Sure, but we have lots of answers to those cards. We have Crackling Bolts and Burning Tendrils and lots of other things. This is not a... Con Yotul is not a control deck. Yotul is a burn deck, and you're using your life toll as a resource to race your opponent. Would much rather do something like Ember Spire Witch to make sure Infantrix doesn't gain life than utilize my life total as a resource to race my opponent. Uh, the older, the younger one is napping and the older one is upstairs with my wife. She's working from home today and he's just hanging out near her. Uh, Extinction is there for the wild diamond matchups predominantly. Where they go so big that you can't afford to race them usually. They have things like wild child to gain a lot of life and you just like actually have to reset the board. Do target champion discards a card for five. Well, that's actually pretty good against us. No, Exarch's great. It's just the the TLDR. Exarch's great. Zozo really doesn't have the same effect. I think I would just like cut that troop slot altogether. I'd probably like if you wanted to get rid of the Exarchs, I'd probably play. Another one or two mana piece of interaction, maybe a rot cast, and then uh, play like a, th a third Lanupa or a Thunderfield Elder. You have to have a critical mass of um, troops in the deck, so your Lanupa sites are good. So I don't think you could just cut them and replace them both with non troops, but I don't think Tazozo is where I'd want to be in life. Uh, I have no idea if I'm making time to play Grand Prix or not next year. That's that's pretty good. Removal. Alright, well, we're going to relentless corruption off of his deck, because worst case, it just gets replaced with an action. I'd much rather this be in my deck. I also want to get this to draw two cards. Alright, so there is a 5 out of 6 chance that we're happy with this Vampire Princess. Please don't take my corruption away. Have a heart, Kismet. God bless you. That's pretty good. Alright, and this time around there's a 1 in 6 chance that we're happy with the outcome. Has a VK? Okay. This could very likely be a monsoon, which is scary. Okie doke. Another VK. So, I think when I'm... Uh, this, is, this is tough. I think I'm supposed to run the gamble on this Vampire King and Inquisition my opponent to check for removal here. He just says rock cast. Alright, well I'm going to take a second VK away. And then there's a two-thirds chance that this VK doesn't make us sad, and we're just going to keep running the percentages here, I think. Huh. If he makes me discard here, I might have been a Vampire King. Alright. Can we keep being lucky? 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 Shards. Sweet. The king saw a shard, and the other one saw a 
I'm gonna cycle this and respond, see what we get. A lot of description, that's not bad. Uh, I think we're just spinning a shard. Yeah. His last card's rot cast. And we can just go this Inquisition. Yep. Yeah, sounds good. So if he doesn't draw removal for this, we're in a medium spot. Okay, that's not a removal spell. I think he's going to crunch with this the squad here, right? I guess it depends on what this is. This hasn't gone out yet, so it's definitely a monsoon. Um, so I'm definitely going to blocks here. The question is, do I want to do I want to have a chance to lose the corruption or lose the king? I think I want a chance to lose the corruption just because it saves me more points of life. And I'm not just eating this because if this is a monsoon, this is going to come back, and this is very likely a monsoon. So again, two thirds chance that we're happy with the outcome of this. Because if this hits the Relentless Corruption, he gets to take it away. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so we're super unhappy if he hits the Relentless Corruption. Yeah, this was a bad block. We did not get punished because I am a champion. We are the champions of the world. Draw three cards off my opponent's deck. Play another VK out. Continue playing the We Are the Champions song in the back of my head. So I'm going to skip this, and I'm actually going to make an Oracle Song here, because if my opponent attacks with everything, I'm going to eat the two Vampire Princesses, and this gives him the least amount of chance for this to hit my, my thing here. Uh, I am currently playing a... it's uh, basically a tap-out control deck. Four mana sweepers, removal, some discard, counter magics, uh, threats that are powerful. Uh, we're just going to take this hit for five here. Plenty of life. Go ahead and reap his dork here. And then I'm going to play this. And I think I'm just supposed to pass the turn here. Yeah, I'm just going to pass. End step, we're going to kill his Vampire King. Wow, okay, so did, did he draw Extinction? To continue to clear defense. So I'm going to go block, block, and I think I'm actually going to kill this. So I want to keep all of these. And, like, if he gets a 2-2 vampire, that's not nothing against my vampire king. So, yeah, I'm just going to go block, block, and then I'm going to kill the vampire princess. Because this princess is 75% to take a card out of my hand. And this will only be one-third to take a card out of my hand. And if this takes a card out of my hand, he gets to kill one of my vampire kings. Whereas if this takes a card out of my hand, he just gets a 2-2. And he missed. God, our our vampire RNG this game was unreal. Just like an un an unreal level of vampire RNG. So hopefully this hits the shard that makes a temporary resource, and then we just go kill plus Ventio here. Yep, sweet. So we play a shard and then just get to use all nine of our resources super efficiently. Kill that guy. Opponent is at 45, so the climb is going to be real here. He likely has extinctions in his deck to destroy all troops, so... Now I have to kind of try and strike a balance between... Oh, you know what? Putting Tarantula Eggs in his deck is actually kind of bad if I have Relentless Corruptions in mine. It's a little awkward. I'm going to hold the second Vampire King, I think... Uh, the Fentio is my opponent's. We drew it with Relentless Corruption. We well, already put three eggs into his deck, though, so I think we're pot committed to this. We're just not going to play Relentless Corruption if we draw it, unless we have an Extinction. Uh, this is... Unless you're asking about Yodel. Yodel we conceded so we could play the Lixel. This is still game one.
God, how lucky am I? The answer to that question is always really lucky, right? Yeah, I mean, the answer to that question is always really lucky. <laughs> All right, that was probably greedy and wrong. We'll see, we'll see. It'll be fine. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> Come on, how can I resist drawing four cards? So, so what happens there, if for people that don't understand, Relentless Corruption draws cards off my opponent's deck, and I used my opponent's card to put Tarantula Eggs into their deck, so when I drew the Tarantula Egg, they got the Tarantula? No, the 5-5's five not unblockable, it just destroys a troop when it comes into play. And I'm not blocking- oh, I should've- I should've attacked. I'm not blocking it because this is a Monsoon, which means when this untunnels, this was going to come back into play. We're probably gonna win this game, even though I was stupid and did. I was. I just. I knew that I shouldn't have played that, but I just. It's more fun to draw cards off their deck. And I often make decisions based on what's the most fun play. That's true. That's true. Greedy is a good word. I knew what the bo I knew what the odds were. What's what's the say? Never tell me the odds. Is that, is that what we say? Crunch. Rot cast. Sure. Okay. So we'll cast this Inquisition before we get a guy. He's gonna make me discard. We'll discard the sorrow. Because this shard here is going to let us activate my champion power. A Vampire King that draws a card? Don't mind if I do. It's exactly. What's the answer to the question? How greedy? Am, am I greedy? Yes. Always. Always yes. Every. Every single time. So Uranaz gets a troop from my opponent's deck and puts into play under my control. Line of Sight draws me a card, which draws me more cards. Rawr. There's a tarantula for us. Opponent dead on board yet? Not quite. They could have extinction to get back in this. Crunch for 16, get another card out of my opponent's decrypt into play under my control. Cast Extinction for the mind game. I would like to use this, I would like a Vampire King. Just mono, mono VKs. Faster clock, maybe. Just you know, gain some life. I guess it gives a or the other one wouldn't have given him the out of extinction. So boarding matchups like this is interesting and awkward, in my opinion. Exarch of the Egg obviously isn't good, so that could come out. I don't actually think Inquisition's great in these matchups. Because we often get to a point where the boards are solid and our hands are tied. Mass poly's tough because it gets stuck in our hand. I think we want some extinctions in case we get behind. Maybe I just want the counter magic. The Charge Colossus and the Counter Magic, perhaps. Maybe I don't want both the Verdicts, and I just want some more ways to interact with the board. So, like, the Mass Poly Dingler's fine. Chaos Key's probably fine. Just, like, more ways to go over the top of what our opponent's doing. I can see Vampire Princess also being okay, just because, like, it bounces with his princesses. But I also don't want to give him targets for his Rot Cast, so I kind of want to wait to bring in Princess in case he leaves Rot Cast in. So I'm going to bring in one, yeah, let's do one Verdict and 
do those in. Uh, I'll be writing about the deck that I played in the Classic over the weekend for Card Market. It'll go up on Friday this week, and you can find uh, archives on my YouTube channel of me playing the deck from last night. I'm, I'm going to Gen Con this weekend, so the live Paper Magic stream isn't happening tomorrow night. We did it last night instead. Would anticipate Shrine. Okay, that's fair. Uh, maybe I should have just brought in both Chaos Keys as a hedge against Shrine. That's a really, it's a really good call. I definitely think you are you are right that I should have I should have brought in both chaos keys. Spell shield's going away really soon. Opponent was asking if I got to Cosmic with the deck that I'm playing, and I was like, yeah, it was mostly this deck. I guess it was, it was split. Like, Yodel, Yodel got me to, um, Yodel got me to Platinum, and then we got from, like, Platinum to Cosmic with this deck. The Killipede. Alright, so, the Killipede, if it hits us twice, we die, basically, is the TLDR. Um, I think I'm gonna play Sh Shard of Cunning. I'm definitely playing Shard of Cunning. The question is, am I playing Lanu Plus Sight, Relentless Corruption, or Thunderfield Elder this turn? I kind of want to play Relentless Corruption. But I guess this starts getting me a critical mass of cards. Yeah, I'm going to lead on this, actually. I guess this punishes us if he casts Inquisition next turn and takes away my only removal spell. I guess I have Transmog still, right? Okay, so I'm not just dead to the Killipede. But if he has double Inquisition, I could be dead to the Killipede. If he has double Inquisition into removal spell for this, I could be dead to the Killipede. Definitely binning the shard here. Yeah, if you if you look below the stream, the thing that's linked there now is actually a link to my um, what's it called page? It's a link to my um, hex.tcg browser page. So this turns this guy into a random 3-drop. That... Well, that could have gone better. That... That definitely could have gone better, and I should have waited for him to declare it as an attacker. So, got sloppy, got punished. So this, out of all the three drops in the game, this is the one he just got. And he left Crackling Rot in, which means this card's not actually great. Alrighty, we can beat Tarantulas with this deck. Okay, I'm just, I'm just saying, we can, we can beat that. I want to play this first because if we hit Extinction, I want to cash it in. It was a bad one to copy. It's it's probably like top top three for how bad it was. There's six tarantula eggs in my deck right now. I don't know if it's the stone worst, but it was definitely up there. Hey, hey, look at that. The tarantula egg, because I didn't play VK last turn, this tarantula is killing this useless princess instead of my VK. Glass half full. Haven't drawn a non-shard in the last four draw steps. Less good. Definitely less good. Our Relentless Corruptions are drawing two at least, though. And we are at 24, so we're not dead for five turns. So we're going to get some draw steps here. we got at least four draws coming, so we're going to have to brick four more times. If this connects, we're going to get to have even more than that. <laughs> oh, 
know, Penta. All right, that that was probably worst case scenario. Uh, the good news is we have five sweepers in my deck right now, so we're dead in we're dead in two now. We haven't played. We did play one extinction. Oh, he discarded it earlier. Okay, so. And again, this is all because of, like, it looks like we're getting a little bit unlucky, and we kind of are, but I also made a mistake. If I would have let him attack with the Killipede before I transmogrifated, um, I would have had three less Tarantula Eggs in my deck, which means he likely wouldn't have had this happen to me. So we've got uh, five live draws here and some redraws. Uh, well, those are technically redraws off of his deck, so survey says... Yeah, that's fine. Survey says, get wrecked. Thank you. Come again. Now we have this counter magic up for a follow-up threat. <sighs> okay. Okay. Yep, yep. Got to counter that one, because otherwise it kills us in one hit. Look. We haven't really drawn any non-shards this game, so, like, at least we could draw one good one off of his deck. So we've drawn two Tarantulas, and there's nine, so there's seven in our deck right now. Come on, removal spell. Alright, got that going for us at least. Okay, working our way down. The scary thing is there's seven tarantulas in our deck, so when we Oracle Song, we're likely going to get some of those. Uh, he probably just has a fistful of removal, I'd assume. Ooh, a piece of candy. Uh, so I'm going to play this, and I'm going to draw two cards before I play this Uranaz, because if I hit a tarantula, I don't want it to kill my Uranaz. Or if I hit two tarantulas, I don't want either of them to hit my Uranaz. I would like this. Oh, and I can get his tarantula and kill one of these tarantulas. Alright, that's pretty good. That's unfortunate. If he has removal for... If he's got two removal spells in his hand, we're, we're in a really bad spot. Oh, just wipe the board. Okay. I almost wanted to play the Lanupaw's site out just to get a critical mass of cards going. That's close there. Mass probably Dingler's a little awkward because he hits a shard. He just makes this discard. Yeah, it's not over till you're dead. Yeah, all the Tarantula eggs. And that's actually not bad because now we get to just Dingler all these away. And play this Chaos Key out. Extinction's his last card. We're in a pretty good spot. Not a great spot, but, you know, not unreasonable. This game's been great. It's been a ton of back and forth. And that's why I love this Blood Sapphire deck, because it just has a ton of play to it. Back to the Ancient Kings, not the worst. Probably going to hold a shard if we draw one to insulate from this. Okay, and I'm assuming he's just going to activate this right away and make us discard our one card. Yep. Yeah, three eggs sounds right. Sign me up. Earn as, and I'm going to get a... Huh. 
I guess it doesn't really matter what I get because he's going to extinction me. So I'm going to take Princess to force the extinction. So that way the VK is in there for later, I guess. But I guess I'm already through both my urn so that doesn't matter, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Dark Wonders. Go ahead and cycle this. Yeah, yeah, if we hadn't drawn, if we would have flipped the sequencing on this verdict and this transmog, the game would have been locked up pretty handily. Yep, kill my guy. Uh, I'm going to hold one shard for now, just so we can play around his champion ability that he's bound to get into a third time at some point. I'd like to say thank you to everyone that's hanging out here this afternoon while we battle some hex. If you're first time by the channel, welcome. My name is Jeff Hoagland. I'm a professional uh, gamer. Play uh, magic and hex on this channel. Um, normally I stream hex twice a week. This week I'm going to Gen Con though, so we're not going to have a second hex stream. I'll be back next Tuesday. Normally we do Tuesdays and Thursday afternoon from noon central standard time-ish until about uh, 5 or so. Crackling rot, sure. Make us discard. Now the question is, do I bin this transmogger fade or the sapphire shard? I actually think I'm going to bin this transmogger fade. Because I'm going to have to, like, actually kill anything he plays. Because it'll just be scary enough to kill me while I'm at six. We have this just removal spell sitting on the table for at any point if he finally draws another threat. Mass Poly Dingler that copies when we play it. God, Thunderfield Elder is so awkward in this deck. So awkward. At least that's insurance against, uh, we've got two insurance against troops right now. Relentless Corruption. Yep, this is the only one in our deck since he Curse of Oblivion them. So let's go ahead and do this and draw three cards off my opponent's deck now. Oh, well, at least one of them does stuff, I guess. Very likely this is going to die. And he left his rot cast in, so if we do, if our opponent does force a game three, we're not going to bring in our own princesses because, yeah. Yes, Relentless Corruption is the main reason for Elder. It's also good, like, hitting hitting all of our threes. Like, Corruptions and Lanupot sites are great to hit with Elder. Inquisition's not bad. And, like, against decks that have counter magic, doubling up things like Dingler and Extinction aren't always bad. Like, against Boris Blast Forge, this would be excellent. And so, I'm actually just going to Dingler here, and the reason why I'm doing this is I just want to get my hand empty. Sure, man. Dinglers are gone. Play Charge Colossus. Play Blood Shard. Pass the turn. Closed Coffins. Cute. And now, I'm actually not going to activate my champion power, because there's still two to three tarantula eggs in my deck, and when they, the tarantulas come into play, they destroy a troop, and I don't want him to destroy my charge colossus. If we hit a Tarantula naturally, then we'll start using my champion ability. But until such time, we will just crunch. I mean, it's not really that good, right? Like, he took the other three out, but the original Relentless Corruption is still in my deck. No, we don't play Magic Online on this channel anymore. 
Not until they make some massive improvements. Magic's great, but we play Paper Magic because Magic Online is poop. Poop soup. Crunch. Getting all charged up over here. Alright, got him. 1 0 in the Luxel tournament now. Oh, hope everyone's doing alright today. Still got some matches going on here. Let's look at. For people that haven't seen it yet, let's pull up the announcement because I actually haven't read it yet and we can read it. Read it together. I'm going to run a quick commercial. Check check the Twitters and the Facebooks while we, while we wait for that. And we'll take a look at this announcement together. It looks sweet. This is the announcement. It's on the front page, but you can get the link for that there. Oh, I guess it's just a real short blurb. It's just people said 275 cards, f new mechanics, four keywords. Twenty new champions and twenty new gems. God, twenty champions is just so insane. It's really nuts. Let's see who's complaining about this on the forums. Um, if you transmog your own thing in response to removal spell, transmog transforms, so it's still the same instant, so it'll still be the target of the removal spell. Yeah, champion rotation doesn't happen until set 6, right? And then I'm gonna lose my Dreaming Fox, right? Dreaming Fox is a set 1 champion? That's so sad! Oh, Dreaming Fox is set three. Oh, good. Oh, good. I have my baby for an extra year. That's exciting. All right, let's let's assimilate. This is what I'm really here for, the agar.io. We are just a tiny amoeba trying to crack into the top ten. That's fine. I'll get by without Vampire King. I just, you know, love me some Dreaming Fox. Oh, jeez. No! No! Ah, uh, Ghostbuster. Ghostbuster. We're not quick. We we're a slow dead amoeba. Oh, oh, jeez. Just right into the firing squad. Eh. <laughs> eh. <laughs> this is real hostile today. <laughs> oh, jeez. No, run away. Run away.
fake excitement. Yeah, Dreaming Fox for life. Hashtag. We'll just once once Dreaming Fox rotates, I'll just give up playing Hex Standard and just like only play Hex Immortal. I'm actually really excited for set six because uh, the idea of two constructed formats is going to be a lot of fun. It'll let us have some some space, you know, to work work in different different settings. Don't you try and eat me, you turd! Run away! Oh! Oh no! Oh no! Three? Why do we need three constructed formats? Oh, you mean like popper? Yeah, popper constructed format would be sweet. I, and I think if they're going through the the, ta the time to add a second constructed format, they could probably add a third that was popper. Oh, chapter block. Nah, block is stupid. I don't think you want to split it that much. I think I think popper. Like a, a all common uncommon format would be would be more ideal. It would bring more people into the game. Popper in Magic is what we call it's only common cards are legal, so it's inexpensive to play. Yeah, but like standard does a good job of of promoting promoting new cards and stuff. So this is a game called Agar.io. You're a blob and you move around and eat dots and you interact with. See, like that 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 big blob. These big blobs are other people that are playing and they're trying to eat me and I'm trying to avoid being eaten by the bigger blobs. It's basically like you know, it's just a good life lesson game. You're trying to avoid getting crapped on by the bigger people. While you crap on the people who are smaller than you. Like this is this is how life works in the real world. Agar.io, a g a r dot i o. I have not tried the snake version yet. So look, we're finally getting to like a middle point here where there's some people that are smaller than us so we can be abusive back. It's great. Oh no, and then there's this, this giant guy over here that we just don't want to be anywhere near. And you can actually split yourself up, like see how these people have multiple, multiple things here. And the goal is to kind of trap people in between other people. Oh, geez, nope. Yep. See, and then they and that guy got bigger because his two halves merged back into each other. And these green spiky things break you apart. Indiana's coming for everyone. Oh no! Oh no! For those that are wondering that you just got here for hex, we are. In between rounds of the Lixel tournament, we're currently one to so we're just playing something to abuse myself. And hopefully, maybe you. If you have any questions about hacks or other things in general, feel free to post them in chat. The smaller you are, the faster you move. Right? This is the new Hex expansion. There's a post about set 5. This is the demo of set 5. Hex 2 blobs of fate. Right?
This is AZ2, yeah, exactly. Maybe someday in the big scary world we'll get onto that, that leaderboard there up there with Team Italia Pro in Indiana. Freddy, come back, Freddy. I'm hungry, Freddy. Oh, no. That was the worst. When every, every time you split and don't eat somebody, it's just like the worst, the worst possible decision you could have made. And eventually your blobs merge back into each other. And see, people that are close to my sides have to be worried about my blobs merging back in because when my blobs merge back in, I'll be bigger than them if I was close to their size. All right, we got Freddy that time, so we threw myself out there and we ate him, so it was worthwhile that time. Yep, and there's Ghostbuster there, splitting, doing all sorts of splits. We're going to get away from him, him or her. And you can see my smaller part moves a little bit faster than my larger part. Oh, geez, he just fed himself to Ghostbuster. That was awful. Now Ghostbuster is huge. There's the good old US of A there. We get bigger just by eating all these little dots up here. Just accidentally ate a little guy by by mistake there. The CIA is hiding inside there. Eat me. Eat me, business. All right, you know. All right, eat that one. We're so large, we accidentally ate somebody, yep. Oh, he just shot himself into me. That was nice of him. Very nice, very nice. Not even top 10 at Argo, right? Uh, I literally top four to large modern tournament with four Eldritch Revolutions in my deck this past weekend. Ooh, look how large we are now. Oh, we are not quite that large, though. Again, crap on the people smaller than you. Don't get crapped on by the people larger than you. It's the name of the game, agar.io. Feel free to jump on and play. Ideally, you pincer. So the problem with Magus of the Moon in Modern is that most of the decks you want a Magus of the Moon have Lightning Bolt. So, yeah. That's basically the TLDR of why that's not great. It's 144. We should be getting more matches. Another match on the Lixel Tournament soon. Oh, that was such scum. Look at that. I should have had him. Rough.
Which game do I actually? Are both are both in game three? That's good. It's good to know. Um, I don't know why people are just sitting there. Oh, geez, sky is huge. Sky, sky is number ten on the board. Okay, that makes sense. There's number one on the board. Oh god. Oh god. Doge. No, we're gonna get eaten by Doge. Split. Abort. Abort. That that that's the worst when you have to split to not get eaten by someone larger than you. So you just like lose half your progress. So someone asked what I prefer as a game, Hex or Magic. Um, you know, it's kind of like... Uh, it's tough to say. Like, I p get to play a lot more Magic than than Hex, so I definitely enjoy when I get to play Hex a lot more cause just because, like, there's so many more large, large Magic tournaments that I play on average. If I'd split earlier and added speed, that's true. Okay. Yeah, I don't know all this this high level agar.io theory, that's why I'm not on top ten. Or just a lowly little pleb trying not to get eaten and eat some other people. Like these guys here. We're coming for these nerds. God, how good would it be if I just split and ate all of these? Oh there it's a big one. Whoa, no! No god! Oh no! We split, and then we got crushed. We split, and we hit one of the spike traps when we split. Oh jeez, and now everyone's coming for me. No, stop it! Stop it! Get out of here! Get out of here! I'm just an innocent blob trying to make it in the real living. No! Oh no! No, we tried so hard! Oh no, we're going- we were so big! We were so big! <laughs> and now we're little! That's so sad. That's so sad. I came so far. <laughs> but in the end, it doesn't even matter. We were so big, and now we're tiny, and... Oh god, he's so big and angry. Big, orange, and angry. Linkin Park was like my, my teenage angst jam. That's so we listened to all of that. Probably know the lyrics to most of it still. Minutes to Midnight was one of my favorite albums growing up. Oh no. Oh no. Gloopy's coming. No! <laughs> Alright, I'm done. I'm done. I've been eating. We'll try more later. Right, how much hex we got got? Are one game still going? Any? Yep, one in game three. Ooh. Yeah, the, the single tasking on the client is not great, and I think they're aware of that. All right, they're coming back.
Yeah, multi queuing. And speaking as someone who's played a lot of Magic Online, where multi queuing is a possibility. Multi queuing sucks. It sucks to play and it sucks to watch. And I wouldn't like being able to play PVE in between rounds would be great. But I don't really care if they had the ability to multi queue because I would never do it. All right, Cosmic Yodel. I think this hand's fine. It's not good, but it's fine. He's on, like, my optimal Yodel deck. This matchup's really hard for us. Three drop to curve is good. Inquisition under opener means we can usually cast it before it becomes... That's, again, this is just their single best card against us. We can't interact with it. Another Extinction Sucker. It's Inquisition here. Hopefully only has one Whirling Brutalizer. All right. God, his next turn is going to be really good. Um, he's going to get to activate his champion ability, play Arena Regular, play a Shard, play a... We're taking six next turn? That's gross. Real gross. So, Arito Igular does the damage every time he gains a charge. His shard gives him a charge, which is two from his champion ability. The Blood Infusion device gives him a charge, which is two from his champion ability. Ebony Pawn does two on its activation. Just drawn three cards. Our first, our first two draw steps this game were cards that we board out in this matchup. So you're saying there's a chance. Maybe run off some VKs here. Looking for a king, looking for a king, looking for a king, or Relentless Corruption to draw some life gain off of our opponent's deck. They have things that gain them life. I'm going to cycle this because we just need Vampire King at this point. Just want to get to him ASAP. No, not really. Um, I really stopped paying attention to Standard, but I'm no longer playing it. Like, there's a PT coming up. Like, the PT is going to really redefine a lot of what's going on. So, good chance we just die this turn. All right, dead on board. Literal Zero Otter, because he's just going to activate this and do this next turn. Ooh. I think this is still a Zero Otter, right? We could even hit Kiss here and not be able to. All right, sweet. Go out on our own terms. Let's continue. Again, we cut the top end. We cut the Thunderfield Elders. We bring in the Counter Magic and the Princesses and the Kisses. Am I supposed to bring in Chaos Keys to tag his stupid... To tag his stupid, uh, whatever they're called? Ebony pawns? I don't hate. Why don't I bring it in one? That might not be the worst. Don't need transmog on the play. Bring in some transmog on the draw. Slow down, whirling brutalizer. 
I think one key's fine. Probably never want to draw two, but one's probably great. I mean, like, sometimes these games just go long and you don't have a life gain, life gain threat on the table. This game's not great, but it's got vampire in it, so I'm going to keep it. Uh, I keep Relentless in against Yodel because a lot of their deck is good against them. Um... But, like, hitting their Vampire Kisses of the is good. Hitting their Blood Infusion Devices is good. Hitting, like, their Burns to kill their troops is good. Drawn just both of our double Sapphire cards. We only have single Sapphire. Awkward. Let's see. Hit a removal spell. It's fine. Pass the turn. Oh, that's so good for us. That's so good for us. Play this Vampire King. Could have Bolt plus Burn here. But if he's spending two, if the Vampire King just, like, gains us five, I'm okay with that as well. God, hopefully there's a bunch of Whirling Brutalizers in his hand that this King's about to gobble up. Crunch. Yeah! Get him. This game's over. Get him, son. Get him! I guess he could go, ooh, you know what? He could go Blood Shard into Electro Fry here. I often bring that card in in this matchup. So hopefully we hit a Sapphire Shard next turn so we can counter magic. You got a Burning Tendrils or a Crackling Bolt maybe? Stem the bleeding a little bit. You thought Vampire King was unique? Yeah, you'd kind of think someone labeled King is unique. And hey, look, we're going to get rid of this Ebony Pawn. Gosh, that's so great. All the blood cards. And he could go Champion Power Electro for our next turn, and we're still not great then. Okay, yep. This is a good good line for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now the real question is, do I cast this or do this? The actual answer is it probably doesn't matter. It's like a build their own adventure book to win the game at this point. It's going to do Relentless Corruption because it's more fun. Play an Ebony Pawn of my own. Crunch. Why not Kiss over Tendrils? Because Kiss can go directly to the dome. Tendrils requires my opponent to have a troop in play. So this is, this is Reach. Yeah, the actual answer, like I said, it's just, it doesn't matter. Just get to do whatever we want. I think I want some transmogs on the draw. I think I want some transmogs on the draw. Cut, like, do I just cut the X-Arcs? They're kind of slow and clunky. Well, I guess they block well. Do those out, put two of these in.
This hand's pretty good with some shards. I'm gonna keep it. Alright, not ghost play dual sun one. It's good for us. Shards. Castable. Okay, castable is the next best thing to shards. Twenty-seven shards on the draw. We're happy if we draw blood shards. We're happy if we draw sapphire shards. We're medium if we draw um, more shards, uh, shard prisms. Okay, mm doke. Two shards on the draw. I miss every time. Got one more chance, Kismet. Please, 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 please. I'm not asking for a lot. <laughs> put the old put two spider eggs in your deck. And by put, I mean put one on top. Excellent. Good, good RNG. She's got so much lightning. Burns, burns, burns like a burning ring of fire. And one of his orcs got some rage. Boom, 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 boom. The orc of rage. The orc of rage. So probably as a whirling brutalizer. Come on. Come on, Kismet. Shard. Shard. I think I just have to pass here. Uh, I'm going to use this as a game three when he plays his Whirling Brutalizer next turn. That's the Whirling Brutalizer. And just like, if we just would have hit any shard there, we could have Vampire Kissed this. And it wouldn't be a big deal. I guess it's gained four because of the rage, yeah. One time, any shard? That's... Oh, I asked for any shard, didn't I? I did. That was the worst shard we could have drawn there because now we can't kill this, so we're taking five... <laughs> I did, I did say any shard. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. The prizes aren't listed? We, we were more than dead. So he was hitting us for... 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. He was hitting us for 15 that turn. He was hitting us for 15. We were very, very dead. I suppose if our opponent just drew all... And that's assuming, like, the opponent didn't draw... A, a, like, they draw any card that deals damage to us the following turn. Like, we could actually... Like, they draw a Crackling Bolt, we actually just die. Yeah, Crackling Bolt was the only card that actually just killed us that turn, but, like, we were pretty... Pretty likely just... Just losing that game. If we would have... So, missing the third shard drop on three was rough, but the fact that we missed it on four as well and then hit the tap shard on five, that was just, was just too much to overcome. Correct. Another brutalizer. No, another brutalizer wouldn't do it because they didn't have. I think they're only playing their fifth resource. Maybe I counted the turns wrong. I'm not sure. All right. What are we doing here? Because that only took 15 minutes. Am I just like conceding this? Yeah. Yeah, this just isn't worth our this just isn't worth our time. I'm just gonna 
I'm just going to forfeit this and play. Play ranked. I should have just played ranked to start. Why did my... Oh, I changed because other people were playing? That makes sense. All gems are rotating. That's correct. 100% of them. We're getting all new gems. Yeah, I dropped. I'm tired of waiting. Waiting sucks. It's bad for streaming. It's bad for the archives. I'd much rather just, like, actually play Hex. Like, we were one and one. Like, there's a chance we just get ranched and just don't, don't win anything for the rest of that anyways. And his Vampire King in it, keep. I'm going to grab blood with this. The only double sapphire thing we have in our main deck is mass polydingler. And then we don't need that till 8 anyways and it's not good in this matchup anyways. Uh, no, it's 2. You get prizes for 2 match wins, I believe. The combination of being 1-1 one, one and having to wait just an infinite amount of time makes the plus EV play conceding there, I think. Like, I'd keep playing if I wasn't, like, streaming. I was just, like, doing other things around the house or, like, playing with the kids in the in-between. But, like... He has Whirling Brutalizer here. We're super dead. This hand was slow. Ah, we're going to regular. We'll get some value out of this extinction. Don't crackling Vortex me. Deal. Uh, no. This deck does not have a lot of Sapphire Shards in it. So, trying to just right... Right on time, Inquisition. Right on time. All right, let's play this and then play play the Inquisition. I was going to play the Thunderfield Elder originally, but I think I'd rather check and make sure the coast is clear for Vampire King. And it was not, so let's go ahead and do that. I know what's his name. Uh, Eglov is running a Blood Sapphire deck that's got Arcane Focuses and... Um, Phoenix Guard messengers in it, and I'd I'd much rather just like have uh, a more consistent, uh, more more resources. I think, like I've played with, I started with Arcane Focuses in the deck, and was just not happy with it. It was just like was always cantripping for land, so I might as well just play more resources. I either want both of these to hit damage or both of them to hit search, because he should only have one more in his deck if he's playing my build. They both hit damage. We're going to go to 10 here, which is fine because we have VK. He got one of each, which is the worst case scenario for us, but meh. Uh, we haven't played the Sapphire Diamond deck today. Maybe we'll play that. It'd be the worst. So we have two more shards in our hand, so I'm going to go ahead and play Shard Vampire King this turn. And the following turn, we can go Shard... Ooh, I'm actually just going to cast this Extinction now. Because I can't cast this Extinction once I put my VK on the table, so I'd much rather just, like, get the one for one now. It's a little less resource efficient, but... We'll see. Is our world where we die this turn? He could go Champion Ability, uh, Crackling, whatever, and then Whirling Brutalizer. Alright, um... Do I go 3-3 three, three here, or do I go Vampire King? I think I'm going 3-3. Three, three. Ten's a pretty high life total, especially with a blocker. Famous last words. Blood Infusion Device is excellent, because it lets us gain some life. Play the Thunderfield Elder out. It 
It feels far will be fine when you can play it on two, but again, I am not playing anywhere near enough Sapphire Shards to be able to play that on two consistently. Uh, my opponent should not have burned my creature, my troop there. Burning my troop there is uh, bad because my opponent should be using their life total as a resource. This Vampire King is probably going to come down and close the game, especially with this Blood Infusion device, but I think the play to win line there is not doing what my opponent did. Like, honestly, even these Thunderfield Elders are questionable because of the number of Sapphire Shards I'm playing. Well, he doesn't draw Burning Tendrils or Crackling Bolt this turn. We're in a great spot. If he draws either of those, we're still in a fine spot. Doesn't hit it, so just concedes. Sure. Again, just going to board how we've been boarding against Yodel. There's been a lot of Yodel today. Maybe we should play the Blood, the, the Sapphire Diamond deck. Boy, what you got? What'd you get? What'd you get? What'd you get? I mean, the important thing to remember is that just because you're doing well doesn't mean your deck is good. Like, you could be doing well for a number of reasons that include variants and just, like, playing better than the people you're playing against, too. Like, I've been successful in, you know, lots of TCGs with decks that aren't actually that good. But they're fun, so I play them anyways because they're fun. You'll see if we let a third shard with this hand. Alright, that's sweet. So we get to go... Huh. I actually have a decision here. I think I just play this and hold up Verdict. This is going to be the worst possible outcome here is Whirling Brutalizer. Maybe I'm supposed to play Exarch of the Egg because of that? Yeah, I'm going to play Exarch of the Egg, actually. I'm going to just go post-combat Exarch. Because this blocks this even if he doesn't have a Whirling Brutalizer. Okay, second one. No shards. That's great. Sex Arc of the Egg is awesome. It's like holding down the fort here, so we get to play get to play this out on um, blood and then Inquisition my opponent here. What'd you get? What'd you get? What'd you get? Hmm. I think I'm supposed to take Ebony Pawn. Yeah, I'm gonna take Ebony Pawn. Card's real annoying. A shard? Nope. And oh, and then a burn. Oh, this was awful. Yeah, he had this line available to him. Yep, this was bad. This was bad. And he missed attacking with one of his guys. Good for us. Two Inquisitions is great. Let's go boop boop. Take away your things. Take away your things. Hi ho the Cherio. Take away your things. We're actually not in a great spot. We need to hit a vampire here. It's a oof. Ooh, yeah, that one's going away. This one's going away. And again, still not in a great spot. We're just like, he draws a shard this turn. We're taking six. That's pretty good. Does five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. I... 
I'm so confused. Dystopia1972 with the two month resub. Thank you for the continued continued months of support. I do appreciate it. So I'm up four life because he just didn't attack with these twice, so I mean I'll take it, I guess. Um I think I'm just supposed to void this dork, and he doesn't get a trigger out of it this way. His last card is Ghostblade Duelist. So if we had a Vampire here at some point, we're going to be good. Another Kiss is great. Um, if we had a Shard, we get to go ahead and activate my Champion ability and pick up two more cards. My opponent's been stuck on two resources through all of this. Another Infusion Device, yep. So I'm going to 8, and again, I could be at four right now if you would have best been a maybe the worst draw on our deck maybe the sing single worst draw on the deck there at least they can't activate these blood infusion devices yet a little surprised he's not playing out the ghost blade duelist Maybe he's playing around Extinction. Again, I just don't think that card's good in this matchup, so I boarded it out. This is tough. I th think I'm obligated to play this. This saves me so much life, and he has to have Burn or Crackling Bolt or Burning Tendrils in Hand draw Ruby Shard. This gets to threaten to block this. Uh, we... Conceded whatever that it was that we were playing. We conceded the Elixir tournament because I was tired of waiting. Okay. What you got? Please have an action. Survey says two terrifying cards. Uh, 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 alrighty. If he would have had one action and one troop, we would have taken the troop and then cracked him and taken the action and gotten a kiss. Fortunately, he did not, so we're just going to pass here. We are dead on board to these if he just, like, draws a shard, which is awful. Hopefully. Ugh. I just didn't want to wait anymore, Martyr. The waiting is just miserable. All right. Well, scale of one to dead. Sliding towards the dead end of the scale. We're dead to a shard. So we want him to draw a card, we can verdict, basically, is what we need to happen here. Draw something, we can verdict, please. Please draw something, we can verdict. God bless you. Need that Dingler, right? We don't have Dingler or Extinction in our deck post board. Please, not another shard. Kiss? Right, and we just need him to draw something we can verdict again. the beats sometimes. Correct. I mean, like, by that argument, we were bound to not draw shards once, you know, we played our 10th shard there, but...
Easy mulligan. Greedy keep. Why aren't we playing Transmogrifade? Because all of the cards in my opponent's deck aren't that great, the troops, and turning them into another troop that's not that great isn't solving a problem. Sometimes I, I don't mind them on the draw to like hit their um, their whirling brutalizers before they hit us, but in general I don't I don't think they're that good. You want you want transmogrifate against decks that have like single really powerful things that you need to stop that aren't like pushing a bunch of damage anyways. So this keep is a good example, and if you've watched this before, um, that's not true. Every one of their troops that has power is something you have to worry about. The only time you don't have to worry about one of their troops without power is when you have a vampire on the board, and if you have a vampire on the board, you're probably winning the game anyways. Alright, we're dead. Let's play the Diamond Sapphire deck. Uh, 